What's up guys, today I'm going to show you how to compose like Sanjus. Uh, we're quickly going to go over how to do the text behind these characters, how to do lens flares, how to make these small shape overlays. Then I'm also going to show you how to make the aura lighting effect, how to make a CC and a CG, so like his color grading. And then to end it off, I'm also going to talk about a few things that I think are pretty bad about his style. So keep watching if you want to know those things. All right, let's get right into the video. Okay, so we got our clip. And then we also got a mask out of the clip, so as you can see, it's just like a rough mask out, it's not too good, uh, but whatever. And then this last clip here is a dust overlay, which we're going to use later on. Alright, so the first thing is the text behind the character. So we're going to add a text layer, and let's just call it Porix. And then let's cut it. And then here, we're going to the character panel and scale it up, like this. And then you also want to like download a font called Chinese Rocks. Um, and then just apply it. All right, then the next thing is to position it a little. So something like this. Then you want to add an effect called gradient ramp and then you want to make it green, for example, because it will also match a lot with the shirt in the background. So a light green here and then maybe a darker green at the bottom. And then you can also click on here. So this is the top one and then click on here and then this is the bottom one. Then the next thing is to drag our overlay. So you just search on Google like dust overlay and you'll definitely find one of these. And you just wanna drag it in After Effects. All right, and now you want to go down here and select the Forex text. Then you want to set this blending mode to difference. And now you just want to re-enable our text. So the visibility of our text. And then as you can see, because it's kind of like grungy texture, which looks really nice. Then we'll go on our text layer and add an effect called as drop shadow. Here we'll just remove the blur, so set it to zero. And then just do something like minus 30 and 30 or 20 maybe. Yeah, like this. And then you can keep it at black or you can just make it a really dark green, uh, something like this, which I like more. Then the next thing is to bring some movement in this. So let's go down to this arrow, animate and then position. And then here you can just add something, a selector and then wiggly. And then you can just remove the range selector. Then here, you can set this last option uh, to minus 20 and then 20. And then here, if you want it faster, you can set it to three seconds, for example, and then it will go a little faster. It will just wiggle around, you know, and two seconds is a little slower. So I like this one personally. All right, so now it wiggles. And then the last thing is to just make it pop out from bottom, for example. So let's press P, separate the values, and then only use the Y one and I'll make it like this. So towards the bottom and then just make it pop out like this. And as you'll see, the gradient will also change a little, uh, but that doesn't really matter. I think it looks nice. And then select them all, F9 graph editor, go to the value graph and then make a graph that looks like this. So it'll go fast first and then it'll go slower and slower. All right, so that's pretty nice. Um, then obviously we want to select these two layers and put it behind the character. So just below the masked out layer. All right, so this is how you create that text. Uh, also like one more thing here down the wiggly selector, you can put it on intersect or add. You just got to try them out. And uh, I personally think add looks the best. All right, then the next thing is the lens flares. So we'll just add a solid layer, control plus Y, and then let's call it lens flare. All right, here we're going to add an effect called optical flares and you can just find it with the link in the description down below. Uh, so we'll just go to options and then choose a nice um, lens flare, maybe something in light, this one maybe. And then you can also change the color. So let's change it to something like, like the orange, you know, it was pretty good. And then press okay. And then go here on transparent, very important. So the black gets removed and then you want to just animate it first of all. So let's set it to something where there's a lot of light. So we'll just set it somewhere around here because there's like a bright part here. So you just drag this thing here. If you don't see this, you go to view and then show layer controls because sometimes it will have uh, this setting on off and now you can't see these things. So view and then show layer controls. All right, then you can just animate it manually. Don't forget to press this watch here to uh, actually animate it and then you can go one frame forward or backwards and then just reposition it really quick. So I'm just going to do that for every frame. All right, so I tracked it. Uh, it looks kind of jittery, but that's not really a problem. We'll also make it flicker. Um, so just set this to 80 and then 20 
and then set it to sharp. And then the last thing is to set the blending mode to um, screen because this will just look way better and it will have a lot more impact on your scene. Um, usually you do want to make it a little less jittery, but I just did it like really quick. So, you know, but it doesn't look too distracting. So uh, it's still fine. All right. So that's for the lens flare. Uh, you can put it above everything, which I like, or you can put it below the mask, which is also an option, but yeah, I just like it above the mask. So it gives a little more color to uh, the character itself too. All right. Then the next thing is like the small shape overlays. For example, a thing that Sanchez does is like have these overlays with a lot of like pluses, for example. So we'll just create that now, add a text layer again, and then just add a bunch of pluses. Let's scale it down for now so we can see it better. Just make sure it's like a grid of pluses uh, or any other character really. All right, then I actually realized something. Um, we might just want to hold Control plus X to remove it, uh, but still keep it copied. And then go to our original clip and then we'll just set it here. So this will make sure if you just link this, that it also moves with our clip, uh, which is really nice. So we'll position it a little more like this. And then the next thing is to make it kind of like scan. So I'll just show you in a moment what that looks like. Uh, it's kind of like the scan effect. So we'll create a mask, just a, a little triangle. Uh, <laughs> this is not a triangle, just a little rectangle. And then let's animate the mask. So do go down to this arrow, masks, and then mask path. And then we'll just go down to here. And then we can just change our mask to go over our pluses like this. And then we can make another mask somewhere around here. And this one will also animate. Um, and then we'll just set it to subtract and then go to here. And then here we can just cover it up again. All right, so now it looks like this. And then you can also change the feather. So maybe to something like 50. So it's even more smooth. All right, and then the last thing is to just easy ease them. So select them all and press F9. All right, and then here you can also set the blending mode to something like overlay maybe. Uh, if you just want to have like less transparency on the darker parts, for example, here. All right, so now it looks like this. And that's just something he does in his edits sometimes. All right, then the next thing is this kind of aura lighting effect, which is basically like the glow around his body, uh, which looks very realistic when there's like a lens flare behind him, which we have. So the first thing we want to do is copy our masked out layer. Then we want to select the layer below it, then hold shift, select the layers below that, then control C, control V to copy it. And we'll pre-compose this one. So we'll say scene copy. Now what you want to do is make the stop one black. So use the fill effect and then set it to black. And now you just want to pre-compose these two. All right, now you want to add an effect called S glow and make sure it kind of overlaps on uh, like over the black parts. And then the last thing is to copy the mask layer again, put it above it and then just make sure you get this alpha map from it. So only the things within the black parts are affected. All right, the last thing you can do is set the blending mode to screen. And then as you can see, we get this glow around him. You can also change the color. Um, so just on the as glow effect, you can make it like more orange uh, or even green in this case, which will uh, make the colors fit a lot more. So that's really nice. And then just change around the size a little. Um, so it looks good to you. All right, so this is the aura lighting effect, uh, which looks really nice. And then we're going to go over to the color correction and the color grading. So for color correction, usually if you have like a lot of clips, you want to make them fit all together uh, color wise and you want to kind of make sure it's kind of neutral. So in this case, we just want to make the masked out layer a little darker and a little more contrasted. So add a Lumetri color and then just make sure it has some contrast and it's not too exposed. All right, then we can add an adjustment layer. So Control Alt plus Y. We want to add another Lumetri color. And usually in Sanchez edits, it's like really saturated. So we just want to saturate it a little and then change the temperature a little, maybe like five. All right, then the next thing we can do is add an effect called looks and then we'll just click on edit. All right, now here it's very important. Your colors might look very messy and we just want to change that to only three colors. So that's usually what Sanchez does as well. He keeps this color palette to like three colors per clip. So for example, here we could keep the green, uh, we could keep the red and we could keep the blue and all the other colors uh, we'll just remove them or we'll change them to the colors that we want. So very important, we'll add Colorista or we could also add a LUT before that um, if you want that. So let's just check them out. Oh, that, that actually looks really nice. So honestly, if you have like good LUTs, definitely apply them. We'll just start off with this LUT here. 
I think it looks pretty nice. And then let's go to Colorista. So first of all, in the shadows, we might want to bring back the blues a little more. So something like this. And then the midtones, I usually don't change them because it's basically like changing the temperature. You can make it colder or warmer, but it won't make sure that we can change each individual color uh, specifically. And then the highlights, I think it's a little too harsh for now, but you could bring back some green uh, if you want like that or red. But yeah, for now, we're just going to keep it neutral. Then here, um, we're going to add some contrast, but we're actually going to do that in the graph here. So make something like this. All right, and then maybe some more saturation. All right, and then now is where the fun happens of color grading. Um, we can start to eliminate some colors and really make our color palette stricter. Um, so first of all, the green, we just want to keep it. And then the yellow is also kind of part of the green. If you see, if you remove it, our green will also kind of get removed. So we need to keep that as well, but we can bring it more towards the green, for example. You can also like bring it more to the orange. So it's all sorts of things you can do with it. Then the orange, we might want to bring more towards the red and then the red more towards the orange and then just boost it a little. Then the pink, uh, we don't really have much of that, so we can just remove it. So bring it to the center. Then the purple, also not much of it, so we can bring it to the center as well. Then the dark blue, we want to pop that out a little more, more towards the light blue maybe. So something like this. And then the light blue itself, we also want to pop that out. As you can see, if we bring it to the center, the things in the background will get really gray, but we really want to keep it. So we need to drag it out more. So now you can really see we have green, we have some red and we have some blue. And that will make sure your color grading will look really nice. Then the last thing is to drag this slider down. So this will basically remove any colors in the dark parts. And then this slider, we can bring it up a little to bring back a little bit of the skin tone. Then if your skin tone is still kind of bad, you can add something like color ramp and then just add a new one, select the skin color. And then on this color wheel, you can just make it darker or lighter, uh, but just don't go too extreme in this. Then you want to add some clarity. So this is basically like a sharpen effect, but it's not only sharpen. It also just brings out the details of the darker parts. So for example, in the text, you'll see it really well. If you set it to hundred, which is way too extreme, of course, You'll see it will just get a lot more detail, which looks really nice. Uh, but we'll set something like 40. Then the next thing is a optical diffusion. So just make the values really extreme so you know what you're working with. And then change the highlights only to 95. And then just change them back again. And here you can disable and enable it to see what you've changed. The last thing is radiation. And this will just give it like a film look a little more realistic. Make the values extreme. Now you can see in his hairline, there's like a red glow. Um, and then you just can just dial it down a little like this. So now it has this like kind of realistic film look, which looks really nice. All right, so that's most of it. You can just press enter. All right, and now as you can see our colors fit a little bit better. So we got the green, the red and the blue that pops out way more than the other colors. And there's almost no other colors here. So maybe like the brown a little, but uh, yeah, that will get like really nitpicky because it has to do a lot with the orange or the red. And we can still remove it, honestly, but it's fine. It's not too distracting, so we'll just keep it. All right, then the last thing is to add just a little glow. So let's add deep glow um, and not too extreme, of course. So just a very slight glow. And then we can also go to our original clip and actually make it a little darker. So our character will pop out way more and our text as well, by the way. So just go down to the base correction and then you want to change the exposure. So decrease it. But not only that, you also want to uh, change the contrast, so make sure you up that as well. And then the last thing is to add a sharpen effect, um, just to, you know, make it a little more sharp. And then maybe also a Lumetri color to add a vignette. So just use these settings, minus 5, 55, then 25. And then you want to set the feather to something like 80. Um, so now you got something like this, which looks really, really nice. So that's about it. Now a few things that I kind of not really like about Sanchez style. So this is not about composting necessarily. I think the composting is great, uh, not too advanced, you know, but you can work on that yourself. Uh, but a few things are like, for example, these white lines on these black bars, which are honestly just not really good. Like if there's one thing I learned from the game editing scene, which I've been in for quite a long time, it's that you never should put anything above your black lines. And you might have like a few effects, for example, where you uh, mask out a character and then it pops out above the black lines and that might look really creative, which is good. But honestly, when you just put like some random white lines, which doesn't even look that great, um, 
then it's just putting something there just to put something there. So I just see some people blindly copying that. And I honestly just know for a fact that they don't know at all what they're doing because it's generally not that great of an effect. Then the last thing is about his outros. Like he has this logo in his outro and then he puts this random Fortnite shockwave overlay on it and it genuinely just, it looks so low effort like it's crazy. Like even just a black screen at the end with like a few black and white logos uh, with like a simple glow will look way better than what he does. So yeah. And I also see some people just blindly copying that. Um, probably just because it's like this popular editor, but honestly, it doesn't look good. He probably knows it himself. And if you're watching this, Sanjus, uh, which you're probably not, but whatever, you know, like just do something else with your outros because it doesn't look good. Um, and you can do like so much more stuff. And there's a lot of people uh, in my community who know that, you know, like they have like way better outros, but still there's like a lot of beginners that just fall into this trap of just blindly copying those editors. So yeah, that's just uh, the last thing I wanted to say about his style. Other than that, it's just a really nice style, you know, especially like the bank cropping and stuff. All right, hopefully you've learned a lot from this video. And if you did, make sure to subscribe. And if you want me to help you even more with After Effects, then make sure to go to the first link in the description down below. All right, bye-bye.